The exposure and HDR toning adjustments in Photoshop CS5 have primarily been designed for 32-bit HDR or high dynamic range images, but you'll notice that you can also apply these adjustments to 16-bit or 8-bit images to create HDR-like effects. However, it's important to remember that when working with smaller bit depth files, you are essentially working with far less information than that of a 32-bit file, which can become very noticeable, emphasizing imperfections in your photographs. So use these adjustments with caution and in the manner in which they were intended for. Now in module 2.7, Advanced Compositing and Automation, I'll discuss exactly how to create a high dynamic range image using multiple exposures in Photoshop. The exposure adjustment is located in the main navigational menu underneath Image, Adjustments, Exposure. Now what you'll notice here is that it's currently not highlighted and this is primarily because my image at the moment is a smart object. So in order to be able to utilize the exposure adjustment, what I first need to do is actually go to Layer, Flatten Image. Now you'll also notice that underneath Layer, uh, new adjustment layer, we also have the exposure option as well. Uh, but for this example, I'm going to just apply it directly to the background layer. So I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments, Exposure. Now, you'll notice that this particular image is quite dense, and that's primarily because it's out of a series of multiple exposures that I shot for a HDR image. Now, this was taken in the Border Range National Park, which is a vast rainforest in southeast Queensland, Australia, and it's quite a spectacular area if you ever get a chance to go visit it. Now, exposure primarily works by performing calculations in a linear color space, rather than that of the current color space you're working in. Now, if you're new to color working spaces, don't worry, as I have an entire module on color management coming up soon. But essentially, when working with a digital image after raw conversion, you'll be working within the parameters of whatever color space, whatever color working space you assign to your image, which could simply be defined as the amount of available colors you have to work with when editing your image. In the exposure window, you'll find presets. Now these will essentially give you a set of options for under and over exposure adjustments which can prove to be quite useful, although for finer adjustments you'll most likely want to actually use the sliders. So I know for a fact that this particular image is approximately two stops underexposed, so if I wanted to actually bring this back to sort of a neutral density, what I'd need to do is essentially add plus two stops, and as you can see here we have minus one, minus two, plus one, and plus two, so I'm going to add plus two stops, and that'll bring me pretty close uh, to a sort of neutral exposure. Now. Underneath the preset drop-down window, you'll have a set of sliders. Now, you'll have the exposure slider, the offset slider, and the gamma correction slider. Now, the exposure slider is what has been uh, adjusted here just by setting my preset to plus 2.0. Uh, but essentially, what the exposure slider does, it adjusts the highlight end of the tonal scale with minimal effect to the extreme shadows. So as I increase the exposure slider, you can see that there's, it's really starting to blow out the highlights in this particular photograph. And as I bring it back, you'll notice that once we get to a reasonable exposure around two plus two stops, you can start to see that the shadows um, tend to remain quite um, solid and, and still have some detail in them as I start to reduce the exposure value. So this is primarily what you want to use when adjusting your highlight values. So I'm just going to set this back to about plus two stops. Now underneath the exposure slider we have the offset slider. Now the offset slider darkens the shadows and midtones and has minimal effect on the highlights. Now this can be extremely dramatic, so you really want to be careful when making adjustments with the offset slider. And as you can see here, just a small adjustment here has actually increased the black point value, and I'm clipping all that 
um, shadow detail that's now disappeared from the image. And if I go the other direction, you'll see that the image actually becomes washed out. So you really want to be careful when using the offset slider, and in most cases, you probably don't want to use it at all. So I'm just going to set that back to zero. Now underneath the offset slider, we have gamma correction. Now gamma, without getting too technical, could be thought of in terms of contrast. Adjusting the gamma correction slider will either increase or decrease the amount of contrast in an image, remapping how tonal values are interpreted. So as I move the gamma correction slider to the left and start to actually increase the gamma correction value, you'll notice that the image will visually become a lot flatter and lower in contrast. But as I start to move the slider to the right hand side and actually decrease the gamma value, the image will start to present with a higher contrast and you'll notice that there's a significant change in density as well. Now also, along with these sliders, we have a set of eyedroppers. The eyedroppers found in the exposure window actually adjust the luminance values of your images, unlike the eyedroppers found in levels, which actually affect all color channels. Now, if you were to use the eyedroppers, you could essentially set the black point, the gray point, and the highlight point in your image. Now, if you were to set the black point using the eyedropper, it would simply adjust the offset value. So if I was to click on, say, the base of this tree uh, that's sort of toppled over here, you'll notice that the offset value will change. And as I start to move that around, it can change quite dramatically. So that'll essentially adjust your black point. Now, if you're going to adjust your midtone point, then you can select the midtone slider, and this will essentially uh, adjust the midtone uh, by using the exposure slider uh, on wherever or whichever area that you actually click in your image. So if I was to click, say, over here around this sort of green uh, moss that's on this tree trunk, you'd notice that now the exposure slider has actually made a slight adjustment. Now, if I wanted to adjust the highlight value of this image, I could use the highlight uh, eyedropper and go and find a highlight value, which is somewhere around up here on the, uh, the ferns, and just select that, and that'll actually adjust the exposure slider as well. So you'll find that the highlight and the mid-tone sliders adjust both, uh, adjust the exposure slider essentially. So what you want to do is make sure that you only use one of these when making your adjustment, either adjust for your highlight or adjust for your mid-tone point. And then you have the option of, of utilizing the actual uh, black point eyedropper if you, uh, if you wish so. So all in all, the exposure adjustment was designed for 32-bit imagery, but it has the potential to be utilized when working with 8-bit or 16-bit images that haven't quite been exposed correctly and need an extreme correction in order to bring them back to life.